Boop, boop, da na na. Boop, boop, da na na. Boop, boop, da na na. Da da da. Presenting your English revision PT. Today we are looking at Lord of the Flies. The importance of Simon. Simon. Oh, Simon. I know. I love Simon. I love him. <laughs> Today's focus is how Simon is presented throughout Lord of the Flies and Golding's reasoning behind Simon's presentation. The author's main ideas, Simon in Lord of the Flies. So Simon is a mysterious figure who usually walks alone. He has no desire for control, but instead has a deep connection with nature. Simon is the only boy who is uncorrupted by savagery and is the only one to recognise that the beast is inside the boys, which leads to his inevitable murder. He is an important figure to contrast with the other boys on the island, such as Audley Ralph or Instinctual Jack. Instead, he represents a third quality, an innate goodness. Oh. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. You're going to try and out-cheese me. I am. Are you ready? Yeah, are you ready? <laughs> Revision won't be a beast if you stick with us. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, before we move into some deeper analysis of the language and ideas that surround Simon, it's actually really useful to look at some vocab that you can keep in mind whilst thinking about him. You might want to pause the video now to make a note of these um, on your notes, whatever kind of notes you're making. But bear in mind that these words will be useful whether you're writing a whole conversation on Simon or even if you're just bringing him into another essay on a wider theme in the novel, for example. Now, I have grouped some of these words together in the following ways, which I'll show you in a second. But you might notice that they're all kind of in connect interconnected and can be used in a variety of ways depending on the ideas that you're kind of presenting throughout your work. My first set that you will see growing now Show Simon as a kind of understanding figure. Um, he's an observer, he's wise, he's perceptive, he's curious. And it links nicely actually to my second set, which shows um, that Simon is mysterious or supernatural. This kind of sets him apart from the other boys in the novel, um, I would say, as it's kind of, you know, his his being as a, as a curious person or as a perceptive person. Um, and his understanding of what that means that deems him to be supernatural, I think. Um, finally, the last set also kind of adds to these ideas and links nicely to the idea of him being um, super or above human. Um, you know, he's kind of Christ-like, he's messianic, which means that he's kind of related to, to God or religion. Um, he's moral, and that's kind of a big word, a big key word that you need to keep in mind whilst you're thinking about Simon. And that actually leads me nicely to my first point of analysis. So um, my first idea about Simon um, and his importance is him being a Christ-like figure within the novel. Now, Simon seems to be a character who is continuously aligned with um, the natural and, and images of nature. Um, it seems as if he kind of abides by the laws of nature and nature also abides by the laws of Simon as well, I suppose. Um, we can see this kind of most significantly as um, um, he kind of takes this beautiful and calm forest as a space and he's kind of closely connected to this, this idea of beauty in nature, which could represent the Garden of Eden. He's also a character that never, ever harms. He's sensitive to Piggy. He gives him his glasses back um, and also says, you know, Piggy's been helping because of his glasses. He also hands out food to the little ones and makes predictions for the future by telling Ralph that um, they will survive. They will get off the island. He has a confrontation with the Lord of the Flies, and this mirrors the confrontation between goodness and evil, between Jesus and Satan. And he also dies telling the truth, telling others the truth, or trying to tell others the truth, which we will come back to a bit later, um, even though they ultimately reject this idea of the beast being um, inside. However, it's super important that we never say um, that Simon is Jesus, but instead he's a Christ-like figure. That's because there are certain ways in which he is very different to um, Jesus as a figure. So unlike the death of Jesus then, 
Simon's death doesn't ultimately lead to the salvation of others. Um, instead, they kind of reject this idea that they, they can get better because they do not know the truth. They're, they're never able to find out the truth. Um, one of the most important quotations that I would pick up on if you are describing Simon in this way is this one that comes from quite early in the novel and links to the idea of him handing out food to the little ones. Then, amid the roar of bees in the afternoon sunlight, Simon found for them the fruit they could not reach, pulled off the choices from up in the foliage, passed them back down to the endless, outstretched hands. The first idea that I would pick up on here is the kind of metaphor that begins this quotation, uh, the roar of bees in the afternoon sunlight, which is a metaphor for the chaos, the violence, the anarchy, the evil that's kind of surrounding Simon on the island. And yet Simon seems to be a figure that is the complete antithesis to this. He's the complete contrast, the complete juxtaposition. Simon's calm, he's kind, okay, and that's kind of what's shown here. We've got the two sides to the island, the goodness and the evil. Again, Simon, as always, is surrounded by natural imagery. You've got the fruit, um, the foliage here, the sunlight. The adjective um, endless also depicts this kind of kindness that has no limits for Simon. It's never ending. It's boundless. And overall, this quotation is an allusion to the biblical story of Jesus as he feeds the multitudes. Here, Simon's picking fruit for the boys because they're hungry. They need something to eat. Their hands are outstretched. Some other quotations that you may want to pick up on for this point are, do you see all day I've been working with Simon, no one else, they're off bathing or eating or playing, which shows that Simon is a kind of helpful figure. We used his specs, said Simon, smearing a black cheek with his forearm. Here again, you've got this idea that he has this knowledge that Piggy is in fact helping, even though it doesn't seem like he is. And lastly, Simon being aligned with nature again. Nothing moved but a pair of gaudy butterflies that dance round each other in the hot air. The notion that Simon is aligned with religion moves us into the next idea that Simon is innately good. In fact, on a scale of bad to good, I would say Simon's off the charts. It's this inerrant goodness that sets him apart from the other boys in the novel and enables both him and actually us as readers to unlock the key message of the novel itself and therefore begin to understand Golding, Golding's ideas about good and evil. While Jack is the manifestation of innate evil, Simon is the manifestation of the human capacity for innate goodness. He's a construct used to show how the human ability to be self-aware or reflective allows us to live a life that's guided by, and here's the key word that I mentioned earlier again, morality or morals. Simon therefore represents what Golding deems as the ideal personality or the ideal human. Um, we can link this idea to philosophical theories of maybe Freud's superego or John Locke's tabula rasa theory. If you don't have any clue what I'm talking about here, have a quick Google for what these things might mean and how they link to the Lord of the Flies. Um, or watch this space. On to some quick language analysis before we move on to our final point. Uh, the most important quotation that I would look for, uh, look at sorry, for this idea is this one on your screen right now. However Simon thought of the beast, there rose before his inward sight the picture of a human at once heroic and sick. The first thing I want to pick up on here is this kind of sensory imagery, this inward sight, um, which kind of portrays this deep perception or insight that Simon has of the beast. He's able to see the beast inside, inward. The second thing that I want to pick up on is the kind of paradox of this syndetic pair, heroic and sick. Syndetic means that um, a pair of words are connected by a conjunction, heroic and sick. Um, and we can see that these pair are linked together in the same way that good and evil are supposed linked together too. And it enables us to understand that humanity has the capacity for both good and evil. So overall, Simon's character then in this way is used as a vehicle for Golding's message that human nature can actually drag us either way. It can drag us to the good side or the evil side, depending on 
which way we allow it to drag us, I suppose. Again, some other quotations that you may want to look at um, in regards to this point, probably some of the most famous for Lord of the Flies. Um, you might want to pause your video here so you can write these down. But they are, maybe, he said hesitantly, maybe there is a beast. What I mean is, maybe it's only us. And the second one, fancy thinking the beast was something you could hunt or kill. You knew, didn't you? I'm part of you. Close, close, close. I'm the reason why it's a no-go, why things are what they are. And that brings me to my last and probably most pessimistic point. I'm sorry to have to end the video on a downer. Spoiler alert, Simon's murder, you guys should know that anyway, um, is an inevitable outcome of his meeting with the Lord of the Flies. In fact, his death is actually foreshadowed um, at this point when um, the pig head says that he's going to have fun on the island and you will see that quotation in a, in a second. This confrontation with evil is not complete until Simon comes face to face with the rest of the evil on the island then. And that evil is the beast or the beasts that exist within each of the other boys, which ultimately results in his death. The murder is presented as a, chaot a chaotically horrific one, where the boys use their animal-like savagery to hunt Simon um, as they mistake him for the beast. This is the point of no return for all of the boys, including Ralph and Piggy, um, whose civilised ways seem long gone really at this point in the novel. It's also super significant um, that Golding uses a kind of extreme pathetic fallacy here, uh, nature is overcome by this really chaotic storm that mirrors the anarchy that's about to take place on the island. And you may want to pause here to think about why this happens when Simon is so directly linked with nature. Evil then prevails. Um, the boys never get the truth. And we are presented with Golding's pessimistic idea that humanity is destroyed by the dominance of evil. The quotation that I would kind of really focus on when you're discussing this point is as follows. It was crying out against the abominable noise, something about a body on the hill. At once the crowd surged after it, poured down the rock, leapt on to the beast, screamed, struck, bit, tore. The first thing that I would pick up on here is the actual movement of pronouns from him to it which kind of dehumanizes Simon and turns him into the beast that the boys believe he is. We no longer have Simon, we have it, it. The second idea then is the collective pronoun, uh, noun, sorry, not collective pronoun, the collective noun of crowd. Um, again, we've got um, this idea of a mob mentality. All of the boys are collected into this one crowd and that includes Ralph and Piggy too. We've got this semantic field of frenzied violence, which creates imagery of a hunt. Um, surged, poured, leapt, scream, struck, bit, tore. You might want to think about the kind of really violent imagery that's created there. And lastly, we've got this sense of dramatic irony, actually, that Simon in the end is mistaken for the beast. He's the one that holds the truth and yet he's the one that the boys are fearful of and so have to kill him. Two other quotations that you may want to think about here are Do you see? You're not wanted. Understand? We are going to have fun on this island, so don't try it on, my poor misguided boy, or else. And secondly, surrounded by a fringe of inquisitive bright creatures, itself a silver shape beneath the steadfast constellations, Simon's dead body moved out towards the open sea. So, what have we learnt? We've learned that Simon represents human capacity for innate goodness. He is the only boy uncorrupted by savagery. He is a messianic, Christ-like figure, but not, not Jesus. Jesus. His murder is an inevitable outcome of his self-awareness that the beast is within. It conveys Golding's pessimistic message of the dominance of evil. Through Simon, Golding presents his ideal human. His reflections allow him to live a life guided by morality.
Now it is time to work out what you can remember, but make sure you have your five minute revision break. Yeah. <laughs> if you need a bit of help with how to test yourself, you could head on over to our TikTok where you'll find the workout for this warm up. Links are down below. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's it, isn't it? I think that's it. Who knows? <laughs> Goodbye. Bye.